So going over the homework, uh, page 129, 6A. So I'm going to do a treat. Now there's three people, there's three coin tosses. Mark, three is about the limit before I try a different approach from a tree. In fact, eventually I'm going to show you how to turn a bucket from the combinatorix unit uh, into a, this equivalent of a tree. Okay? But I like a tree, it's visual. How many people are there? How many coins are being flipped? How many people are there? How many coins are being flipped? How many levels will my tree have? How many people are there? How many coins are being flipped? How many levels will my tree have? Okay, spot the pattern? Okay. In other words, my tree is going to look... Is there a place where I my coins? Oh, in here? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Sorry. Um, who's the first person? Mark. So I'm going to have... I'll call it... Heads from Rebecca, tails from Rebecca. And I'm going really wide because I know i got to fit a couple more trees in. Who flips next? So I can have heads, Elizabeth, tails, Elizabeth, heads, Elizabeth, tails, Elizabeth. Who flips next? Heads, Jenny. Tails, Jenny, heads, Jenny, tails, Jenny, heads, Jenny, tails, Jenny, heads, Jenny, tails, Jenny. It takes about 30 seconds for me to draw the tree, so it's not that big amount of time. And especially because I notice part B has multiple parts, this will be worth doing. Uh, by the way, how many outcomes are there? How many branches at the bottom? Eight. Okay. Oh, I should say one more thing. The textbook draws trees horizontally, and I learn to draw them vertically. So I tend to draw them starting at the top, going down. But you can imagine this flipped sideways as well. There's valid points for doing both. Okay. Now let's actually continue. It says this. If one of the students throws a different outcome from the other two, that student buys all three coffees. So what does event B, part one, want me to do? Rebecca what? For that to occur, she has to throw different from the other two. So let's walk down each branch. Down this branch, it's heads, 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 all identical, she doesn't buy. Down this branch, heads, heads, you know what? Jenny buys down this branch. Down this branch, heads, tails, heads, uh, Elizabeth buys. D oh, you know what? Rebecca buys down this branch. What other branch does she buy? This one. Any others? No. How many does she buy? How many outcomes? Out of? Okay. Now, I can erase. You guys can't. So maybe now you might scribble that out. I'll erase. Each student buys their own. Uh, oh. If all the students throw the same outcome, you know what? That's tails, 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 or heads, heads, heads. Also, two out of eight. In the back, by the way, does it say two out of eight? I'm sure it says one out of four. And this is why I said to you guys, use your fraction, reduce. But I like the two out of eight, two out of eight, because it already tells me, hey, there's, uh, I've used up two out of eight. I've used up two out of eight. Maybe there's four out of eight other outcomes. Any, uh, Jenny gets a free coffee. Okay, how can Jenny get a free coffee? She'll get a free coffee here, 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 and here, right? You know what? Each of these people playing actually has a 50-50, one half, one in two chance of getting a free coffee. There's three of them playing. I wouldn't have predicted that. With three of them playing, I might have assumed there was a one in three chance of, of getting a free coffee. No, it turns out you got a half a chance of getting a free coffee. Is that okay? Okay. Useful tree, very useful. So how did I start out? How many events are there? How many levels are there for the tree? That, that's part of the hint to, to figure out how to draw these. Uh, number 10, you asked? Okay. Number 10, I noticed, I noticed, Darian, that this is divided. Actually, it turns out into uh, eight little mini sections. So I said this. Um, the probability of A 
is one, two, three out of eight. I'll change color. Is that okay, Darian? Yeah. So I said A is uh, this one here. Probability of B is, I think B is 4 out of 8. Is that right? And the probability of C, I can do it from the diagram or I can use the complement trick. It's 1 out of 8 because I've already got 7 out of 8. What's the probability that she wins a stuffed rabbit? How do you win a stuffed rabbit? Which event is that according to the question? So 3 out of 8. Now they want a decimal answer. Can I assume you all know how to change a fraction into a decimal? 3 divided by 8 equals, I think it's 0.375 if I'm doing the math right in my head, I suspect. Mm -hmm. Okay. 0 0.375. But by the way, this workbook is made in Alberta, and on their provincial exams, they have these little fill-in-the-blank one. Oh, no, on your, on your Math 10 exam, you guys had stuff like this, too, so that's where it's from. Does not win a unicorn. What's the probability that she does win a unicorn? So what's the probability that she doesn't? 7 out of 8, which is going to be 7 divided by 8.875. Yeah? Just on question 10, put down 0. 0.4, round to one decimal place. Oh, sure, 0. 0.4. I would never round to one decimal place, but yeah, okay. That's really inaccurate in my mind. I could be better than that. Sure, 0.4 is what it says in the back, yeah? Yeah. Any other questions from this page? So then we did lesson two, part two, or redone. Lesson two was related events, and the homework that I assigned there, I think it was from a couple of pages, no, no, uh, page 141, numbers one and two. So page 141, numbers one and two was, uh, was right here. And what I wanted to get across was the topic or the term, uh, and we're going to talk about it more today, mutually exclusive, no overlap. So I think number one hopefully went okay. And then number two, uh, all, are there any of these that you're going, how the heck would I get that? And for mutually exclusive, if they actually tell me what the events mm -hmm. are, what I'm really saying is, hey, can they both happen at the same time? Can you be bald? and have hair at the same time? No, one or the other. Can you be tall and be short at the same time? No, those are mutually exclusive. Can you be a male and a female at the same time? Don't get into anything obscure. Those are mutually exclusive, okay? Uh, can it be raining and sunshiny? Sorry, can it be raining and not raining at the same time? No, you're raining or you're not. Mutually exclusive. Right. Let's talk cards, because cards is better examples. Can you be a black card and a red card at the same time? Those are mutually exclusive. Can you be a jack and a red card at the same time? Those, there'd be some overlap. There'd be some overlap. So any questions from that? Then if in the notes, part two that I gave you, if you would be so kind as to turn to uh, lesson three, please. Everybody has their handy dandy schmandy package of notes here. Don't lose it, please. Again, easiest thing is fold it in half and just keep tucking it into wherever we're doing the homework. The event A or B, and I've given you the punchline, Brandon, already. Brandon, sorry. Uh, or means what? Add, but I want to convince you of that. When do you add probabilities? So we'll start out with dots and we'll go back to, hey, if you can count it, you can solve it. it says this. If each of the 13 outcomes in the sample space is equally likely, state the probabilities by counting. What's the probability of A? I'll give you a hint. It's out of 13. What's the probability of B? Three. What's the probability of A or B? A or B means one or the other or both. Seven. What's the probability of A and B? Zero. No overlap. Okay. And then it asks, what's the relationship between A or B, A and B? What's the relationship between these two numbers and that? Yeah. Or means add. Oh, sort of. What if there's overlap? So what's the relationship?
Now I want to bring the notation that the workbook brought in. What was their symbol for or? Union. So A union B means add. That's the formula on your formula sheet. How is situation two different from situation one? It's a fancy word for that. Situation two is not mutually exclusive. Apparently, event A and B can happen at the same time. That's, I'm getting all that from the picture, even though I don't know what they are. What's the probability of A? Four out of 13. What's the probability of B? Five out of 13. What's the probability of A or B? I'll give you a hint. Not 9. Ooh. Right? What's the probability of A and B? Can you see a relationship between these numbers? Specifically, can you show me how I can use this number, this number, and this number to end up with 8 out of 13? Minus the overlap. This is the formula that we also looked at. So this is the universal or. Or really means add minus the overlap. A union or or B is A plus B minus, oh, and a little reminder, the symbol for and was intersection, upside down N. By the way, I remember that because N and and almost sound alike, right? Whatever dumb way you have of keeping track of that. Laura, this is the formula that always works, because this formula would also work up here because and was zero, and adding or subtracting zero doesn't change your answer. This is the universal one. The special subcase is the top one. That's when they're mutually exclusive, no overlap. So here's the addition law. Turn the page. The general case, A or B, and remember, that's the same as union, is A plus B minus A and, or intersection, B. If they're mutually exclusive, then you know that there is, because well, and is zero, because and is zero. So you want a basic question? What's the, what's the probability of flipping a heads on a coin or rolling a one on a dice? Ah, wait a minute. There's some overlap there. Let's come back to that. Let's come back to that. Or is there some overlap there? Let's come back to that. Let's go to cards. Let's go to cards. So here are events. We're going to draw a card. How many cards? How many cards are we drawing? One. one, not a tree. A one level tree doesn't make much sense. Okay, I can do this one by counting. What if they said two cards, tree? Three cards, maybe tree. Getting a little yucky. Five cards, I haven't showed you the tricks yet. Buckets and combinatorics. NCR and NPR and all that stuff. Okay, but how many cards are we drawing here? One, just count it. Use a formula. Event S is the uh, card is a spade. It says uh, identify the events in the sample space. So I'm going to circle the spades in black because spades are black. Event R is the card is red. I'll circle those in red because I can. You guys can just use the same color and kind of keep track of them. But there's the red cards. The diamonds and the hearts are in the middle. And event F is a face card. I'll do that in uh, green. And the face cards are the Jack, Queen, Kings up there.
Which of these three events are mutually exclusive? The picture is worth a thousand words. It becomes pretty obvious. Which two have no overlap? Or maybe not. Which two have no overlap? Face cards and spades overlap right there. Red and spades. You can't be red and a spade at the same time. Sure, we believe that. So it says, determine the following probabilities, first of all, by counting, because if you can count it, you can solve it. So if you happen to have a whole deck of cards in front of you, we can count. What's the probability of S, spades? 13 out of 52. What's the probability of red, R? 26 out of 52. Yeah, I know that's one half, but leave it as 26 out of 52. What's the probability of S and R? Trick question. Nothing. Or, now you can count them all, or you can say it's going to be 13 out of 52 plus 26 out of 52. In this case, they want us to technically count, so 39 out of 52. Hey, part two, probably the S, we already did that, 13 out of 52. What's the probability that you're a face card? How many face cards are there? 12 out of 52. Did you count or did you go four times three cleverly? to get the 12, yeah. And, oh, how many face cards are also spades? What's the overlap? Three? Or, now it wants me to do this by counting, which means I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. But if you're lazy, you could try our addition rule and say, does it work if I add them together and subtract the overlap? If I go 13 plus 12 minus 3, and I can do that because they're all common denominators, does that also give me the 22? Yep. So it says using the addition law or means add. It would be 13. Well, you know what? I'm going to do this all symbolically. S plus R, and S plus F minus S and F. 13 out of 52 plus 12 out of 52 minus 3 out of 52. What does or mean add? Minus the overlap. Now, what we will usually try and do, Chelsea, is we will try and set up our trees so there is no overlap, and then or just means add. That's down the pipe. Did you turn the page? Yeah, good call. Can you give me 10 more minutes? Okay. I'm not a big fan of the formulas, though. So here's a classic example. I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. The question can be on the test. You can absolutely expect a question like this. Now, what is this? Where there's two different categories and subgroups. There are 30 students in a class. How many? 30. 16 students surf the internet, and 10 students use email. Of these students, six do both. What is the probability that a randomly selected student in the class surfs the internet or uses email? Solution A says use a formula. Solution B says use a Venn diagram. I'm going to do a Venn diagram first, and then I'm going to show you how to do this with a formula. But if I did a lovely Venn diagram over here, I have uh, two categories, internet, Email. What kind of a diagram did I just draw, Brianna? Begins letter V. Where do I always start with a Venn diagram? Who remembers? 
middle. So first thing I asked Brianna, did they tell me the overlap, the and, the both? Read the question carefully. I caught you zoning out. I know, I'm good. So read the question now to yourself. Did they tell me the overlap, the and, the both? Brianna, how many surf the internet? By the way, you can tell I typed these notes up about nine years ago because no one says surf the internet. Anyways, whatever. How many surf the internet? 16, grand total. So am I gonna put a 16 here? Say no. How many am I gonna put right there? How many do I have here? So how many am I gonna put here if I wanna have 16 in here grand total? There's your 10 that you were saying, yeah. How many use email? Grand total. Am I gonna put a 10 right? No, because how many do I already have in the email group? Six, so how many am I gonna put here? Four? Right? See where the 10 is now? Yeah, yeah, you with me? I'm picking on you, you were zoning out. How many kids are there grand total in this class? How many do I have in my Venn diagram? So how many are gonna be outside the circles in the rectangle? There's the neither. Okay? Now, this question wants us to find the probability of I or E. I'll give you a hint. It's going to be out of 30. And you already answered it. How many kids did we have in those circles? You said... There it is. Chelsea Hustleback. But I wanted you to see the Venn diagram approach. I find that to me cleaner, especially I use a Venn diagram, Rachel, if there's only two categories, and especially if there's a part B and a part C, and because what if part B they said, how many uh, only use the internet? 10 out of 30. How many only use email but don't actually surf the web? Four out of 30. What's the, uh, I'm saying how many, what's the probability? Hey, what's the probability that they don't have an email or have an internet? Uh, 10 out of 30. I can see them all sitting there. 20 out of 30. Using a formula, I would have gone like this. Oh, sorry. Probability of internet or email is uh, one plus the other minus both. One plus the other minus both. And this works too, Brianna. How many kids surf the internet grand total? Now, how many kids, read the question, how many kids surf the internet grand total? Yeah, out of 30. Plus, how many kids use email grand total? Out of 30. Minus, how many do both? You're way overcomplicating this, Angel. Do the math in your head. Does that also work out to 20 out of 30? See it? You get 26 minus 6, 20 out of 30. Which one's clearer? I find if I take the time to draw the Venn, it kind of falls apart. I'm a fan of pictures. But I don't care which method you use, Kyle. But just to let you know where you can use some of this. So here, I want to try and give you some examples of where you might use this in industry or in business. So uh, Wilma the Web Wiz, she's a business person, and she submits bids on two web design projects. She thinks she's got a 70% chance of getting the first project. She figures she's got a 50% chance of getting the second project. She's pretty sure she's only got about a 25% chance of missing both of them, of getting neither. Find the problem that she gets A, B, C. Okay. Although it's possible to do this with a formula, I'm, I would absolutely encourage you to use a Venn diagram. Now, how do I know? When do I use a Venn diagram? Then do I use a Venn? No? Okay, tough audience. You use Venn, then. 
Okay. Only two choices. Project one, project two. Percentages, I'll write out the word because that's too many dots. Especially if they give me percentages, I tend to head that way. And if there is some overlap, if they mention the word both or neither, because both of those imply some overlap. Ready? Here's my Venn diagram. Project one, project two. I'll use Roman numerals so I don't get them mixed up with actual numbers. Giancarlo, is that a Venn diagram? Uh, yeah. Where would I start? In the middle. Did they tell me both the overlap? No, they didn't. Then I put an X there. Did they tell me the probability that I get the first project? Yes. What? 70%. This would be wrong. 79x. Because now, if you add up that whole circle, it still adds to 70%. The same way as Brianna pointed out that I didn't put a 16 here. Instead, I, well, I got 6 there. I'm only going to put a 10 there. There's my 16. And I didn't put a 10 there. I got 10 in the whole circle. I already got 6, 4 there. I've got x. Whatever's left goes there, 70 minus x. Did they tell me the probability that I get the second project? Yes. What? 50% minus. By the way, that's if I, that I only get the second project, 50 minus x. Did they tell me neither? I like this question, I like this question, I like this question. And in particular here, I'm either, Mark, going to give you the overlap, like the one Brianna and I just did, or I'll give you the outside part and force you to work your way backwards like this one. And I'll be honest, I have probably going to give you this one. Now, in the previous one, we filled in this 10 down here by saying, hey, how many kids are there in the classroom? 30. Here, they didn't tell me how many kids there are in the classroom, but it's percentages. What do the percentages have to add to? 100. Because that's every possibility. Say that again. What do they have to add to? 100. So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're saying this added to that, added to that, added to that has to add to what? All four regions have to add to 100 if it's a percent. Giancarlo, by the way, what is negative x plus x? Negative, negative x plus x. Cancels. So I have a 70 plus a 50 plus a 25. What's that? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm slow. I know. Use your calculator. I have a 70. Add the numbers, please. Like Gather like terms. I have a 70 plus a 50 plus a 25. What's that? 145? So I have 145 take away x equals 100. I think x is 45. I think 145 minus 45 is 100. Otherwise, minus 145 from both sides, divide by negative one. You, you can solve, but I'm pretty sure this one. Giancarlo, you okay with that? So now, <coughs> go back to the circle, cross out the x. What am I going to put there instead? 45. 45. Cross out the 70 minus x. What am I going to put there instead? 25. Or you could use your calculator. Cross out the 50 minus x in your head. What's 50? Take away 45. Now, why is this so nice? I can now answer every question. What's the probability as a percent that she gets A, both projects? 45%. 45%. 
what's the probability that she gets at least one? That means one or both. Do you see it? 25 plus 45 plus 5, anything in the circle, right? What's the probability that she gets only the first project, but not the second? What's the probability that she gets only one of the two projects, but not both? So if, if you were running this business, you would say, you know what, I only got a 30% chance of only getting one project. That means there's a good chance that I might end up with both. I, don't, I, I want to make sure I have enough workers. Right? You can imagine if we expanded on this, certainly dairy and businesses would find this useful. I hope, I think. Turn the page. I want to talk about mutually exclusive and how you can tell. Two ways, intuitively and mathematically. The intuitive method simply says, we, a we ask, can these events happen at the same time? So here's event A. If you're rolling a dice, rolling an odd number, and event B, rolling an even number. Can a number be odd and even at the same time? So are these mutually exclusive? This is the intuitive way. What about uh, event A, pick an ace, event B, pick a spade. Can you be an ace and a spade at the same time? In fact, that card has a name. What do we call a card that's an ace and a spade at the same time? The what of what? Ace of spades. Ace of spades. So are these mutually exclusive? No. That's the best way. Let's use a gut instinct. If you don't know what the events are, we can use the formula. If you add A and B and you get OR, then the overlap must have been zero. And they're mutually exclusive. So here's event A, here's event B, OR is 0.65. Are A and B mutually exclusive? Is 0.4 plus 0.3 0.65? Even though I don't know what the events are, I can tell you they can both happen at the same time. Uh, not only that, if I got 0.65 and I went 0.4 plus 0.3 minus, hey, what is, the over, what is the probability of them both happening at the same time? What is and? Really? What's 0. 0.4 plus 0. 0.3? 0. 0.7 take away what is 0. 0.65? It's got to be a 0. 0.05, right? And this is where the formula, Grayson, can be powerful because in the, with the formula, I don't need to know what the events are. That can sometimes be handy if all I have is the data. But I can tell you there is a 5% chance, 0 0.05 is a decimal, 5% chance that A and B occur at the same time. So this is the formulaic approach. Are these mutually, oh, turn the page. Are these mutually exclusive? Well, if they are, then if I add A plus B, I better get 2 thirds. Hey, let's use the fancy schmancy fraction button on my calculator. If I go 5 twelfths, 5 fraction button 12, plus 1 fraction button 3, do I get 2 thirds? What do I get? So yes or no, are A and B mutually exclusive? They're not mutually exclusive. There is some overlap. AND exists. How big is AND? Well, what's OR according to this question? A 
according to this question, read it. What's or? You're way overcomplicating it. According to this question, read it. What's or? Okay. Or is two thirds. What was A? Five twelfths. What was B? One third minus. What's the overlap? I don't know, but it does exist because the math doesn't work otherwise. We got two thirds equals. What did we get when we added five twelfths and one third? Let's call that x. How would I get the x by itself? OK, you've had me for physics, so you know a lot of the mm -hmm. shortcuts. Yeah, to be honest, in physics, I would plus the x over to get rid of it. For now, because they haven't done physics, I think if you go minus 3 quarters from both sides, I don't know how to, hey. 2 fraction 3 take away 3 fraction 4, you get negative 1 12th equals negative x. What happens to the negatives? What's x? 1 12th. What's and? 1 12th. For this to work, the overlap must be 1 and 12. I guess 1 and 12 times, on average, both will happen at the same time. So going back up to here, 1 12th. This is the formula approach. Last one, we're done. Event A is 1 third. Event B is 1 fifth. A or B is 8 out of 15. Are they mutually exclusive? Well, let's find out. 1 third plus 1 fifth is, oh, 8 out of 15. Are they mutually exclusive? Mm -hmm. So what's and? Zero. Zero. OK. If in the homework, they're going to give you some of these fractionally. Use the fraction button. I'm, I'm not fussy. Go ahead. They'll give you some as decimals. Use your calculator, although you might be able to do the decimals in your head. Certainly the 0.65 equals 0.7 minus what? I could get the 0.05 in my head. I always feel a nerdy pride when I do that. But your homework, please try page 142, numbers 3 to 12. Some of these I've assigned already. So 3, 4, 5, 6. Six, I would probably do a Venn diagram, but it's showing you to do both. Seven is tricky. Seven is a Venn diagram. I'll almost certainly end up talking about number seven next class, but I always like to assign it to see who figures it out first. I think I assigned eight this time. Yep. I think I assigned nine this time. These are good Venn diagrams. 10, 11, and 12. How did I know just by glancing that these were Venn diagram questions? I saw percentages. I saw the word both. I saw two categories. I saw, oh, that's number nine. Number eight, I saw percentages. I saw the word and. That's not a Venn diagram. That's more comment. Okay.